Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today in my studio. As you know, I've been looking at Critter lately and I'm just blown away with uh, all of the brushes and features that are in there. There are a few problems with it. I talk about one in this video uh, a bit later on, but I wanted to try out the pastel brushes. And today I had a go with the chalk grainy brush and this is a result, so let's just get straight into the painting. So I opened up Krita uh, and I created a new layer. I don't know why I did this, because I could have put the colour that I'm using on the background layer. And I filled that with a sort of a dusty pink and then locked that layer so I couldn't do anything else to it and then created another layer so the actual background layer has got nothing on it at all layer one that you can see in the stack there has got my pink on and then i'm starting to paint and i thought because i can see pink in this photograph uh, this is a photo that my daughter took when she was traveling in um, australia so uh, i've never been there i've not seen the scene that pop-up menu, I have to say, frustrates me so much. I um, touch my I, I hold my stylus um, with my finger sitting over the two buttons, and every now and again, I put a little bit too much pressure on it, and up pops that menu. And I don't use it a lot. Perhaps I should get into using it. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. You'll see now what I'm doing. Uh, I've not done any pastel drawings in Krita at all before or anything. So I'm just trying different brushes. And uh, the one I'm using now, I felt feels a little bit more like a watercolor brush where I'm sort of painting on not very wet paper, but just damp paper. So uh, I'm playing around with a few brushes. And the one that I set on is called the Chalk Grainy Brush. And I use that for the rest of the painting. I don't, yeah, I don't swap it at all. I do the old of painting with that one brush. So I've got in a few shadows, and then I'm start thinking about putting in the sea. And I'm hopping all over the place. Really, I'm not kind of really sure where I'm going with this. And what struck me about the photo was the lovely yellows in the leaves and the sort of greeny yellows. And that's what I wanted to capture. And I was kind of itching to get into the yellow. But I thought I'll try and work and sketch in uh, the shadows first. And I, I don't know why I put the C in. Maybe I just wanted to get some highlights in. to um, Just so I could judge values better possibly. And I'm not going to put the cars in. They're not adding anything to the scene at all. They're not relevant to this painting. So I'm just going to leave those out completely. And there pops up that uh, menu again. And then I always sort of struggled to get rid of it. And it was about halfway through this painting. I realized if I just touch the button again, it disappears. But I have to have the cursor really close to the, um, or the stylus really close to the, um, surface of the tablet for it to close so back into the sky again at the the sea again i sort of wanted to get that in first and i can see there the tone is quite dark compared to the photo so I'm, i've tried to get the um, stylus size to be the um, similar to a piece of uh, pastel that I will be drawing on the paper with. So that was the uh, objective here. And I have to say the size is the only adjustment I made throughout the whole of the painting. I didn't, and this is in real time, by the way, um, Everybody seems to like the real-time video, so I'm sort of sticking with that for the moment. Um, but I was drawing this one sort of over the Christmas break, and I just wanted to 
enjoy the drawing process. I didn't want to uh, do the audio while I was painting. I just sort of set the recorder going and uh, was just got into doing some drawing uh, just because I wanted to. So that's why I didn't record the audio while I was um, while I was painting. I thought I'll do the audio after. And now I'm looking at the length of the video and I'm thinking, oh, why didn't I record the audio while I was painting? Because I've got to think of something to say for possibly 40 minutes or so. But never mind. <laughs> so I'm still sort of, um, I'm looking at this now and I'm wondering, sort of wondering why I am um, popping around all over the place. I think I, I would have been better concentrating on the sky, getting that in, getting that finished. Uh, but I clearly was itching, absolutely itching to do these trees. So I'm looking at a sort of a mid-tone that is going to be sitting under the highlights of the leaves, first of all. And you can imagine that I've got a really a big stick of um, past layer laying on these broad strokes and I'm trying to do it if you look I'm trying to do it the same way as I would if I was holding a stick of pastel and I think that is the secret if you're doing any media uh, sort of realistic looking media digitally you have to try and paint it the same way as you would if you was um, working with that media Otherwise, it's just not going to look like a pastel or a watercolour or um, an oil painting. You've got to try and paint it that same way. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. And you can see that with the with the strokes. I didn't like that green. Um, although in the photo, you can see that sort of green in the um, bottom left area. But you don't see much purple, I must admit. But I do like using um, purples in my shadow areas. I'm not really going for realistic colours here, obviously. I'm going for these sort of really vibrant colours that um, you can get with pastels. Somebody was asking me, um, do I get frustrated when I'm doing pastel drawings with the limited palette because obviously if you're painting digitally like this you've got every color under the sun you've got the biggest palette you can ever imagine and that is one of the advantages of painting digitally obviously you can um you can just have an infinite palette of color and yes i do get frustrated uh, when i'm painting with uh, pastels and I have bought quite a few the last uh, month I've spent quite a bit of money um, restocking my pastels and uh, buying new pastels uh, just because the ones I got the first thing I noticed I do like using purples as I've said here and the first thing that I noticed with the real pastels was I didn't have enough purples and I was looking for um boxes of colors with purples in so yeah painting with real media can be very frustrating and that's one reason to be painting digitally so as you can see i am kind of working over the old canvas and i've sort of got my eyes squinted and looking at the um bigger picture as it were and just the blocks of color and trying to get those in and i've got this very abstract looking um painting going off here at the minute and i'm just popping all over getting in these colors working on the light tones and the the skies or the sky color you see now i'm picking a warm orange so i guess i'm going to start putting some highlights on the trees sizing up the brush so you can imagine 
um, either using the tip of the pastel or using a smaller piece, piece that's broken off perhaps. And I moved that branch in a little bit uh, from the side. I felt if I'd have left the, the branch on the left that I just put in, or the trunk, I should say, if I don't put it where it is exactly on the photo, it would have been a distraction and would have pulled your eye out to the um, left-hand side of the picture, which is not what I wanted at all. So I moved it uh, and just, just pulled it across, not a massive amount, but just enough so it wasn't right at the edge of the uh, paper or canvas because I didn't want that to be a distraction now I'm going in with some warmer, darker browns just to get that sort of um, the dark shadows underneath the canopy, overpainting that with the purple as well. I guess my uh, logic behind this, I do things without thinking uh, about colour because I've sort of you know, I've been studying colour a long time. And when I'm looking at this now, I'm probably subconsciously thinking um, yellow and purple are complementary colours. So if I go in with nice purple shadow colours, I've got a nice complement um, to the yellow that's going to be on there. So I guess that's why I'm just drawn to those purple tones and you can see you, with the video being in real time you can see the delicacies of the actual brush strokes that you just don't get when I do a, a sp speeded video so I do understand why you prefer this because I'm watching this now and I can see how I sort of do these strokes where I sort of come up to it and start off slow, then just sort of flick the stroke in. Um, just like the, the pastel drawing. And if this was speeded up, I don't think you'd see that at all. So you do get to see a lot more of the technique. So at this point, there's lots of sort of looking at the reference image. I'm not trying to um, get an exact rendering of this. This is just uh, an inspiration. But I do want to sort of um, get the shadows on the trees and the uh, light coming through the trees. I do want to try and capture that. So uh, that's why I'm referencing uh, the image looking at the photo so much but i'm not going for the same sort of um detail that i would be if i was painting a portrait for example where i want it to be accurate i'm just going for a feel so we're still very very abstract we've got lots of pink showing through there at the minute uh but i'm putting a bit of detail in i suspect most of this detail is going to disappear when I, um, as I keep painting and adding more colours onto the leaves as we go in, um, I'm pretty sure it's all going to get covered, or a lot of it's going to get covered up. The main branches aren't going to get covered up, but some of the smaller ones are. So I'm going in with a nice warm orange. That kind of makes that, putting the orange in will help make this tree um, pop a little bit and stand out. And it's watching it, uh, a painting again, because when I actually painted this, was it was about well over a week ago. So I'm doing the uh, voiceover now. And I can't really remember much about the um, painting. Sometimes when I do the voiceover, I'll do it straight away. So I can, I've can i got it fresh in my mind where I'm going with it. And I'm just wondering uh, if I was going to paint 
some of that orange onto that tree on the left, which would be a, a distraction. And I'm glad to say I didn't, I didn't do that. All of these colours that are going on now are kind of still on the underpainting that I intend to uh, cover up with uh, darker tones possibly. And then maybe even some highlighted tones on the top of that as well. That is a really nice brush, you know. Honestly, I can't believe this app's free. It's it, it gives all of the others a run for the money. It really does. I think this is critter is going to become one of my um, default apps that I'm using along with Art Rage pretty much give up on Corel Painter to be honest uh, that's because of the driver issues I'm having with it uh, I really like the program and it's got some awesome features but it just doesn't it doesn't want to play with my Wacom tablet and it, I end up so frustrated that um, I can't use it So why is it something like Corel Painter, which is, you know, it's not a cheap program. It's probably the most expensive painting app out there. has got problems with uh, bugs with the Wacom tablet. Yet Critter hasn't. Critter works like a dream. So I'm sort of making up some um trees here and as i say every single time i do some trees notice the different thicknesses the different uh widths apart there's different gaps between them there are different angles and they're different heights it's not like a row of soldiers so you need to get that kind of variety in there although i'd I'm looking at the two thicker trunks. In fact, the three, if you look at the main trunk and then the other two thicker trunks, they are all pretty much, they've got the same gap between them and uh, they're all at the same angle. So it'd be interesting to see what I do with that. Because I haven't got, uh, I'm not looking at the finished drawing at all now. So um, I've only got the reference image to go on and I kind of forgot what it looked like, what the actual finished product looked like. So it, it's interesting to see how it's evolving. Going up for a lighter colour. I do need to, uh, because I'm still sort of playing around with Krita, I haven't really got into the hot keys yet. I know how to make me brush bigger and smaller using the square brackets and resize the canvas and things. But I haven't bothered to uh, look at the colour picker. Uh, so I'm I'm not picking up colours off the canvas um, like I would be in Art Rage or in Procreate or any of the other programmes. So I do need to sort that out. And usually what happens is I'm recording and then I think, oh, I must work out how to do that and I thought I can't do that while I'm recording it's just going to take too long and it's going to look dead messy then I've got to edit the video so I don't I don't bother and uh, I need to do it so when I finish vid this video I'm going to do that I didn't use any smudge um, techniques or smudge blending brushes or anything like that to sort of blend colors together which I probably could have done, to be honest. Um, so I just used uh, techniques of sort of picking colours that are close to one another to paint edges and trying to uh, blend in like that rather than with um, blending brushes. You can see I'm now going in with the lighter colour. Still not the brightest,
And I'm clearly not looking at the reference image too much there when I look at that. I actually uh, finished this drawing and then I left it a few days and came back back to it to finish it off because uh, I'd signed it and thought it was right. Okay, that's done. That's a finished painting. But um, what happened was I uh, I came back to it and thought, oh, it's not finished at all. I need to do a little bit more. So what I'm doing, I'm just sort of building up the colours. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit now. Otherwise, this video is going to be really, really long. And I'll be back talking to you when I get to the second stage. So I'll be right back. Well, I'm back and I hope you like that music. That was called Beneath the Moonlight and the, the musician or the artist that wrote it was called Aaron Kenny. And I got it from the YouTube Music Library. Um, I've been watching loads of YouTube vids and it occurred to me that when people put uh, speed bits up and um, put soundtracks over it, quite often they use the same soundtrack over and over again. And when you've watched four or five of the videos, that soundtrack gets pretty um, irritating. So I thought what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of mix it up a bit and try and use different soundtracks when I put um, uh, uh, some music as a backing track for uh, the a bit where it's speeded up. So... Um, I thought that's going to help with the um, irritation of listening to the same piece over and over again. And also I take it on board that when I use the uh, 1812 Overture, that was a bit overkill and in your face and quite distracting from the painting. So I probably won't use that one again. Anyway, back to the painting. So I, I looked at it and I thought, you know what? Um... It's not finished. I need to um, tighten it up. It just looked a little bit too abstract. And I felt that the way I was going to tighten it up and make it feel a bit more, I'm not saying real because it's not real at all, but so you can recognize the shapes a bit easier perhaps. I thought I needed to just work on the detail around the edges of the shapes. And there's that menu popping up again. So annoying. So annoying. Uh, at this point, I don't think I've still quite worked out how to get rid of it. So you can see I've 
made my um, brush quite small and I'm going in at the edges painting in uh, sort of alternating really between sky pop popping in bits of sky and um, leaves so I'm sort of at the minute I'm working on the sky and there's that menu again so I thought I needed a little bit of a lighter color there uh, and also, if if you look at the sort of right in the middle of the painting, where the trees touch the sky, I felt that there's not enough definition there at all. So that needed to be addressed, which I do later on by darkening up the sky. Uh, something that I uh, I came to a little bit later in the painting. But at the minute, I can see that in my painting we've got these sort of big clumps but there's no light f f where the sky is really shining through especially on the smaller tree sort of where there's a gap between the tree on the far right and the smaller tree that needs emphasizing more i need more emphasis below that tree and sort of the other gaps between the trees so that's what I'm focusing on right now. And I'm doing this by using a much smaller brush. No other settings have been changed, just the size. Beautiful thing about digital pastels is you can just overpaint them and overpaint them. It's like you're using the most expensive paper or board that money can buy and uh, you can just sort of just overpaint and overpaint and it will always take more pastels that you uh, are applying over the top. And I wanted to also redefine the C. Uh, it sort of all got lost somehow and you couldn't see that at all so I wanted to sort of bring that back in working in the shadows again And I'm conscious that the sort of the main tree, all the branches are sort of uh, lost and now just a, a jumble, which needs redefining as well. So I am using the reference image quite a lot here. Keep I keep uh, referring to it and looking at it just to try and see how these shapes work on the actual photo so I can try and reproduce them a little bit in the, the uh, painting so it becomes more defined but still keep that real looseness about it I don't want I don't want it to look too real I want it to look and I don't want it to look labored I want it to look loose and airy and vibrant. So as you can see, I'm, I'm, I am concentrating on the edges and I'm trying to leave little bits of uh, clumps of lighter color around it and uh, painting darker strokes on top and then overworking it with lighter strokes as well. So I now decide that I'm going to put some light areas into this background. You see them going in now and redefining those uh, branches somewhat.
So as you look at the uh, drawing, it's um, the effect I'm trying to get is that the each brush stroke uh, or, or stroke of pastel or mark on the canvas looks like it's been placed down almost randomly. But as you can see, look at the time I'm taking in between each brush stroke. I'm really thinking where I'm going to go with it. It's um, not just sort of like the speed painting where it looks like I'm sort of just whizzing through it. Every mark is planned and thought through. I've said that a few times in the past as well. So I'm sort of painting negative uh, in a negative style at the minute, painting in that sky around the trees and the branches and the all the leaves. To me, it's making a massive difference. All of a sudden now, I can I can actually see the scene, and it makes sense. It's not just a jumble of colour, but it's still really loose and almost abstract. And now I'm going in with the um, C again. And to keep the looseness of it, I make the brush quite a bit bigger there. Echoing it in the sky as well, sort of covering up some of the uh, Pink, a bit more of the pink. It's interesting now that the types of brush strokes have changed from the earlier painting when I was doing these sort of wispy strokes that were sort of started off slow and were quite long. And um, now they're much more just little dabs you can see much more delicate marks more refined and I guess that's because I'm coming into the later stages of the painting and just refining it and putting the details in uh, I didn't like that color that's going in there at all That's better. Um, I have to say that I have a, a, a problem with Critter. When I came to make this video that I've never had with any other paint program before. And that was the when I exported the image as a JPEG. All the colors were totally wrong. It was absolutely saturated with with color and all the sort of tones seem to have disappeared and um i tried changing the profile of it in um affinity photo and was messing around with it and i just couldn't get it right and so i thought oh that's really weird how am i going to make this video i can't get the, the jpeg when i load it into i'm using it film express to make the videos when i load it in there it just distorts the colors as though it's not web safe colors or something. So uh, how I got around it, I re-exported the image as a PNG and then it was fine. Um, and it came out great. So uh, I, I will show you at the end of the video, I'll show you the um, two different images so you can see what the JPEG looked like. When I put I, when I looked at the JPEG in any other app, when I opened it up in Affinity Photo, it was fine. It looked great, and uh, Windows browser it looked fine. But when I opened it up in the video editing, it was all over the place. So I don't know if that's uh, it. Film expresses an issue with that, or if it's an issue with Critter. But to be on the safe side, I will be exporting 
uh, in PNGs or a PNG format in the future. What I'm doing now, I felt that the, the shapes looked a bit flat and I wanted to put some shadows underneath them. So I've gone in with this sort of darker yellow and even darker still. And I, I think that just sort of puts, um, adds some form to the leaves that uh, I wasn't getting before. Bigger brush, so I've got nice bolder strokes. And then I'll probably shrink it down to put in a little bit more detail. So as you can see, when I thought I'd finished the drawing initially, um, I do a lot more work on it when I come to it the second time. In fact, um, the first drawing session took just over an hour. And this second one that I'm uh, looking at now, this was, uh, was another half hour's drawing time. So the old drawing took an hour and a half in total. Sometimes it's really hard to keep it loose and not overwork it. working so hard to keep it fresh and not get into detail and sort of start almost painting every leaf i'm really trying to keep it looking nice and fresh so what i'm doing now i'm over painting on where i've got those sort of um the, the darker shades in, the darker tones. I needed to add some highlights onto the top of those. So continue. I'm just sort of working on building this up. So I think I'll just speed it up again just to um, get to the end. Because, again, it's sort of repetitive brushwork. And I, I don't want to make the video too long or bore you to death. So I will be right back to... Um, wind up the video and tell you about the problems with the JPEG and the PNG. So I'm just finishing off the final brush strokes. You notice I've got some nice uh, soft pinks in there. I thought I'd bring the pink of the background color back into the painting. And there we have it. And look at that. That is the JPEG. What's going off there? Those colors are just way, way, way too oversaturated. So let's just blend it in. And that's the PNG version. So um, if you're gonna use Krita, export it as a png file just so you don't get any problems uh hope you've enjoyed this video if you have a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because i have lots of videos like this and i would love to be sharing them with you so hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye